elements symbols in chemistry now uh, first let's understand what is the meaning of an element and symbols i guess element is something which you have been uh, understanding from the previous lectures so i'm not getting into it but let's talk about symbols now whichever country you are every country has its own currency right so let's say in india we have rupee and the rupee is given by this mark you have dollar which is written by the symbol like this you have britain pound okay which is written as like this so what does each one of these represents each one of them represent a particular thing so this represent a rupee this represents a dollar and this represents a pound so if i write this is mean that it is 100 pounds right so in short instead of writing the complete pound i used a symbol which is this to denote a pound similarly in chemistry also you know you have various kinds of elements okay so let's say you have sodium right you have carbon you have oxygen and everything else so in chemistry also instead of using these names complete names okay what we do is we use symbols right so let's say for carbon we use c for oxygen we use o okay and for sodium we use na this is what i'm talking about the modern terminology or the modern symbols which are used to represent various elements when i say elements these basically denote the atoms of the element why because we know that the all these elements are made up of atoms now coming back to the main point you know uh, these symbols in chemistry that are used dalton who was a scientist used these symbols okay to denote various things but these symbols which were used by dalton instead of using alphabets basically used various kinds of pictures so if i come back and let me tell you what kind of symbol history is there so symbols originally were the ones which were given by dalton okay and thereafter the second part is the modern system in dalton system basically various elements which were there let's say for example hydrogen was represented by a picture so this would be represented by a circle and then this should be a this small semicircle which is filled up inside that if you talk about carbon carbon used to be okay we are talking about blackboard so i'm not using the black but carbon used to be a symbol which is represented something like this a circle which has been filled completely if i talk about let's say for example phosphorus this was something like this now if one has to remember all these permutations and combination it was pretty difficult for the simple reason that you know all of them were represented by circles someone had a small circle inside it then someone has a complete filled circle so instead of remembering all this the modern system what it did was it kind of abolished all the use of these kinds of symbols okay these were done away with right but instead what they did was they said okay let me just remove this so they said why do we use, need to use these instead why not use the first alphabet of a given thing as its symbol so let's say for example for hydrogen let me use h right then for carbon let me use c or for phosphorus let me use p now these are three other simple ones which are there but what can happen is that there can be situation where you know instead of it's not only hydrogen that you have from h so let's say if i talk about helium gas right so what i did in these three cases was i used the first alphabet now if i talk about helium again helium also starts with h if i use the symbol as h then there will be a confusion whether this is hydrogen or helium 
So instead of using the first alphabet over here, they said, okay, in case of a conflict, we can use the first two alphabets. Right? So instead of representing helium by H, we write HE. So what we do is either we use the name of the element itself, the first al alphabet. In cases where there are more than one, in some cases these are represented by the first two alphabets. Or it can also be that, you know, some of these elements which are there have Latin names. Okay, and let me give you one of the most common examples here. Let's talk about sodium. Right? In case of sodium, the first alphabet is what? It is S, second is O. Right? But the Latin name of sodium is natrium. Right? The symbol of sodium that is used is actually Na. So instead of maybe using the first alphabet or the first or the second alphabet, in this case we use the first two alphabet of the Latin name. So just to summarize, in the modern system, we either used the first alphabet, okay, or we use the combination of first two alphabet, or we also use either the first one or the both of them for the Latin names of the element. So now basically, you know, discovery of these elements is something which is an ongoing process. So in case there is any new discovery, okay, then the name of any new element okay which are newly discovered is decided by the international union of pure and applied chemistry in short it is also known as IUPAC or IUPAC right so that was more around the symbols and their history so I mean if you just summarize it in two parts originally it was Dalton who proposed various pictures in the form of circles some smaller circles filled in circles cross circles and all those things for various elements but because it was a little difficult to kind of remember them because let's say for example if you're writing water which is H2O imagine you have to write this okay and then represented by two molecules and then oxygen again so instead of doing all this they said let's use the first alphabet maybe if in cases if there's a two things we use the first two alphabets depending on when the discovery is happening and in some case maybe the first two alphabets of the latin name i hope you would have understood with this video thank you for being with us today we look forward to having you in many more such videos